England is the home of the dinosaurs. It was here that in 1842, the infamous zoologist Sir Richard Owen created the name Dinosauria, the terrible lizards, and almost two centuries of research in England has resulted in some incredibly significant contributions to the study of this fantastic animal group. But this country's connection to dinosaurs goes back even further than 1842. The county of Oxfordshire in particular has a very rich history of important dinosaur discoveries, and in this video we'll be taking a look at the four species that are especially associated with this region. The very first dinosaur to ever be scientifically named and described was actually a species discovered in Oxfordshire. In 1824, the world was introduced to Megalosaurus, a creature thought at the time to be a giant quadrupedal saurian. This animal was named by a man called William Buckland, a dean who was also a professor of geology at Oxford University, and the name he gave it means Great Lizard. The material that Buckland had at the time was not particularly complete, being made up of some parts of the pelvis, vertebrae, bits of limb bones, ribs, and the famous lower jaw. These bones had been acquired by Buckland after they were unearthed from a quarry in Stonesfield, a village in Oxfordshire and it was in 1818 that the famous French anatomist Georges Cuvier visited Buckland to examine the fossils he had. With both men concluding that the bones had belonged to a giant lizard, Cuvier later encouraged Buckland to publish a description of the remains. Before he could officially describe the creature, however, another person, the physician James Parkinson, used the name Megalosaurus in reference to the bones in his book on British fossils published in 1822. This is why you may sometimes see the name Megalosaurus credited to Parkinson, but since he did not provide a sufficient technical description of the animal, and Buckland did two years later, it's officially Buckland who was the first person to name a dinosaur. Non-avian, that is. Megalosaurus remains might actually have been discovered and described in England even earlier than this though, as there's an interesting description of a bone from 1677 that also originated from a quarry in Oxfordshire. Another professor at Oxford University, Robert Plott, published a book on the natural history of the county and included an illustration and explanation of a fossilised bone he identified as the lower end of a femur. Plott thought that this femur perhaps belonged to either a giant human like those in the Bible, or maybe a Roman war elephant, but today it has been identified as a megalosaurus bone. Almost 100 years later, in 1763, the physician Richard Brooks published a book in which he included the illustration of this bone, but he actually gave a name to the animal it supposedly came from, calling it Scrotum Humanum in a caption, due to its apparent resemblance to a certain piece of anatomy. There was some concern in the past that this name would actually take priority over Megalosaurus, since it was a binomial name published long before Buckland's description, but luckily Megalosaurus is now the official title for the animal. A fearsome predatory dinosaur called Scrotum would have been quite something though. As you've probably heard before, our perceptions of dinosaur life appearance have changed significantly since the time of Buckland, and when Megalosaurus was first reconstructed in illustrations and for the Crystal Palace Park model, it was shown as a large quadrupedal reptile, but with legs held directly under the body instead of sprawling to the sides. The famous model, which was influenced a great deal by Sir Richard Owen's ideas too, actually included a large hump on its back, thought to have been due to long vertebral spines believed to belong to Megalosaurus at the time it was constructed, but now realised to be from a different theropod. Today, this animal is understood to have been a bipedal predator of between 6 to 9 metres long, though no complete skeletons have been discovered so far, making it difficult to estimate an exact size. From what we do have, which is a decent amount, we know this creature was a pretty robust species, with an elongated skull filled with teeth perfectly adapted for the slicing of flesh. Megalosaurus has been suggested by paleontologists to have been the apex predator of the region where it lived, coexisting with a few other theropods and possibly preying on sauropods and stegosaurs. Speaking of sauropods, the very first sauropod that was known for more than just a tooth also comes from Oxfordshire. The earliest remains of this animal came from near the town of Chipping Norton in 1825, and the collectors who recovered the bones thought they might have belonged to a whale. It was then in 1841 that Sir Richard Owen gave a name to the creature that left these fossils, Cetiosaurus, which he thought at the time was some sort of marine crocodilian. 
Several different species of Cetiosaurus were named over the years, causing the name to become what is known as a wastebasket taxon. Later developments have also resulted in the identity of the original type species becoming unclear. 1871 saw the naming of another species, by Professor John Phillips, this one being called Cetiosaurus oxoniensis, and based on several specimens belonging to multiple individual animals. This was also the time when it was realised that these bones came from a dinosaur. Today, Cetiosaurus oxoniensis is considered the type and the only valid species. One particular specimen of this species that was uncovered in 1968 is actually the most complete sauropod fossil found anywhere in England, although its classification as Cetiosaurus oxoniensis has been challenged, but for now it is still considered an example of this sauropod species. Estimated at a length of around 16 metres, Cetiosaurus was a large animal, but by no means the largest of the sauropods. Unlike later sauropods that evolved, this animal possessed dorsal vertebrae that did not have many air chambers present. Cetiosaurus also had slightly unusual limb anatomy, with a forelimb length that matched that of the hind limb, and its neck was not really that long for a sauropod. The tail of the creature was much longer than the neck, composed of about 40 vertebrae. It's possible that Cetiosaurus was preyed upon by Megalosaurus and other theropods, since it shared its mid-Jurassic floodplain environment with these organisms. Paleontologists have also suggested that this animal was likely a generalist feeder, consuming vegetation that was both low on the ground and slightly elevated above it, due to the length of its neck and limbs. Oxfordshire has even more cool dinosaur species associated with it though, such as Eustreptospondylus. This creature, another theropod from the mid-Jurassic, was slightly younger in age than Megalosaurus, and was first discovered when workers found a relatively complete skeleton at a brick pit in Summertown. This creature was most likely uncovered in 1870, since it was the next year when Professor John Phillips described the fossils, but did not officially name the species. The original specimen, which actually still remains the most complete example of a theropod from the mid-Jurassic of Europe, was referred to both Megalosaurus and Streptospondylus, before a new genus was created in 1964, and the animal was named Eustreptospondylus oxoniensis. Even more confusingly, this skeleton has also been argued to be very similar to the theropod Magnosaurus, and so there is a possibility that these are actually the same animal. The rocks in which Eustreptospondylus was found, part of the Oxford clay formation, were marine sediments, and so it's possible that this dinosaur was a coastal predator. This theropod has also been portrayed in the past as being affected by insular dwarfism, due to its discovery in a marine paleoenvironment, suggesting that perhaps it lived on an island, and also as a result of its slightly smaller size. However, the original skeleton was only small in size since it was not fully grown when it died, and though it would not have easily achieved the sizes of Megalosaurus, it was not all that particularly undersized for a theropod. Eustreptospondylus is also actually a fairly close relative of the Spinosaurids, and is potentially an early ancestor of this iconic group. The fourth and final of the well-known Oxfordshire dinosaurs is Cumnoria, which also has a bit of a convoluted naming history. This ornithopod comes from slightly later in time than the other organisms we've talked about, originating in rocks of late Jurassic age instead of the mid-Jurassic. The material this species was based on was first collected in 1879 in the Chorley Brick Pits located near the village of Cumnor. Another professor, paleontologist Joseph Prestwich, realised that the material was of importance, and made sure that the fossils were properly secured. The fossils were then described by someone else as a new species of iguanodon, named Iguanodon Prestwichii, after Prestwich. In 1888, however, it was then decided that these bones were distinct enough for an entirely new genus to be created, and so Cumnoria prestwichii was named for the town its fossils were found near. However, the next year the genus was abandoned, with another scientist reassigning the specimen to the North American genus Camptosaurus. This classification was accepted for over a century, until in 1998 a paleontologist found support for the specimen actually representing a unique genus, as was already concluded back in 1888, and that Cumnoria should be a valid name. Further support for this distinction was published in 2008, and then even more in 2010 and 2011, when analyses revealed that Cumnoria did indeed have a separate position on the evolutionary tree to Camptosaurus. 
The original material that gave rise to this taxon was actually relatively complete, with a partially intact skull and many body elements, including parts of the limbs, vertebrae, and hips. Cumnoria was a pretty small bipedal dinosaur, at between 3 and 3.5 three and metres long, and, as indicated by the long-standing confusion of what it should be called, would have been very similar in overall appearance to Camptosaurus. So, there we have four dinosaurs from Oxfordshire that illustrate how significant paleontological discoveries from England have been. The very history of dinosaur research began here, and the various English scientists who have contributed to this research have revealed some truly fascinating insights into what our planet was like during the time of these iconic organisms, transforming our perception of the past and continually advancing the world's knowledge of the history of life on Earth. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.